I don't really know if I agree with him, but uh, all I know is he's trying to he's trying to make me feel very old. <laughs> and he's succeeding admirably. Let us pray. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable to you, O God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Okay, um, today is, as you have heard, one of those three-in-one Sundays. It is Palm and Passion Sunday, as well as our intergenerational Sunday. So some preliminaries, three things. Number one, I haven't preached from this pulpit for almost a year. So I think I may be a bit rusty, so just forgive. Huh? Number two, the scriptures are embedded in the message. And number three, actually I forgot what number three was. That's what I call S-O-A, pronounced SWE, signs of aging. Eventually, you will understand. Since this is Intergenerational Sunday, I'd like to begin with a children's story. Um, and it's by Judith Viost. Uh, who was born in 1931 and is, as far as I know, is still alive. Um, she is from the US. She's a writer, journalist, researcher, and an author of children's books. This storybook, which I'm going to read from, sold over two million copies. And I have one of those copies. It's called Alexander and the Terrible, Horrible, No Good, Very Bad Day. She speaks through the mouth of five-year-old Alexander, actually the name of one of her sons, and the other two boys also named after her sons. And I have had to adapt it to adjust to what I call the US peculiarities. Since it was published also in 1972, which if you can calculate, is half a century ago. Um, also need to note that because it was then, there were no cell phones, a long distance call was expensive and it had to be on a land line. Some of us still remember. I think the children never seen this before maybe. Uh, let's call it telephone, kids. <laughs> And uh, they might have had push button as well as IDD. Okay, so that's the information you need just as we go uh, into the story. So here goes, and uh, those who are, this is a children's story, but those who are not children may also listen in if you want. All right, Alexander and the terrible Horrible, no good, very bad day. Alexander says, I went to bed, I went to bed. I'm thinking like Donald Trump now. <laughs> I went to sleep with chewing gum in my mouth and now there's gum in my hair. And when I got out of bed this morning, I tripped on the skateboard. By mistake, I dropped my sweater into the sink while the water was running. I could tell it was going to be a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. At breakfast, Anthony, brother, found a Corvette Stingray car kit in his breakfast cereal box. Nick, other brother, found a junior undercover agent code ring in his breakfast cereal box. But in my breakfast cereal box, all I found was breakfast cereal. I think I'll move to Australia. In the carpool, going to school, Auntie Jenny let Becky have a seat next to the window. Audrey and Elliot got six seats next to the window too. I said I was being scrunched. I said I was being smushed. I said, if I don't get a seat next to the window, I'm going to be car sick. But no one even answered. I could tell. It was going to be a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. 
At school, the teacher said, uh, the, at school, the teacher liked Paul's picture of the sailboat better than my picture of the invisible castle. <laughs> at singing time, she said I sang too loud. At counting time, she said I left out 16. Who needs 16? I could tell it was going to be a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. I could tell because Paul said I wasn't his friend anymore. He said that Philip was his best friend. I, I, I wasn't his best friend anymore. He said Philip was his best friend and Albert was his next best friend and was only his third best friend. I hope you sit on a thumbtack, I told Paul. I hope the next time you get a double-decker strawberry ice cream cone, the ice cream part falls off the cone part and lands in Australia. There were cupcakes in Philip's lunch bag. Albert got a Hershey chocolate bar with almonds. And Paul's mother gave him a piece of jelly donut with little coconut sprinkles on the top. Guess whose mother forgot to put in dessert? It was a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. That's what it was because after school, my mom told us we need to go to the dentist. And the dentist found a cavity only in me. Come back next week and I'll fix it, said the dentist. Next week, I said, I'm going to Australia. On the way downstairs, the lift door closed on my foot. And while we were waiting for my mum to get the car, Anthony made me fall where it was muddy. And then I started crying because of the mud. Nick and I was, Nick said I was a crybaby. And while I was punching Nick for saying crybaby, my mum came back with a car and scolded me for being muddy and fighting. I'm having a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. I told everybody, no one even answered. So then we went to the shoe store to buy some shoes. Anthony chose white ones with red stripes. Nick chose red ones with white stripes. I chose blue ones with red stripes. But the shoe person said, sold out. They made me buy plain white ones, but they can't make me wear them. When we picked up my dad from his office, he said I couldn't play with a copying machine, but I forgot. He also said to watch out for the books on his desk, and I was very careful except for my elbow. He said, don't fool around with the phone, but I think I called Australia. My dad said, please don't play with the phone anymore. It was a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. There was beans for dinner, and I hate beans. There was kissing on TV, and I hate kissing. The bath was too hot. I got soaked in my eyes. My marble went down the drain. I had to wear my railroad train pajamas, and I hate my railroad train pajamas. When I went to bed, Nick took back the pillow. He said I could keep, and the Mickey Mouse nightlight burned out. I bit my tongue. The cat wants to sleep with Anthony, not with me. It has been a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. My mom says that some days are like that, even in Australia. <laughs> no bad, huh? Quite a nice story. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm just wondering, how many of us can say we identify with Alexander? How many of us can say, well, I've had such terrible, horrible, no good, very bad days? I understand and I can remember um, okay, just try. Anyone here can say, I've never had such a thing as a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day in my whole life. Okay, just checking. And because terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day is so long, when I'm tired, I'm going to refer it as THNGVBD. Same thing, right? And uh, it's pronounced thing very bad. T-H-N-G is thing, V-B-D is very bad. So if I'm tired, it's thing very bad. But it means the same thing. Um, I can identify with Alexander because in my own lifetime, I've had quite a few thing very bads. <clears throat> For example, the latest one, <clears throat> of note is 
uh, like, like I said, the last time I preached was just after I had fractured my clavicle. Uh, if you don't remember, I remember because it was my fracture. A <laughs> couple of weeks after that, um, I got an infection called peritonsillar abscess. The swelling next to the tonsils. And the doctor said uh, it could be life-threatening because the swelling could so bad it could actually cut off the air. And die one, as they say. Huh? So I was warded for three and a half days in high dependency. Uh, very painful, couldn't eat uh, for two days on drip feed, uh, but eventually cured with uh, antibiotics and steroids. There was an upside. They also in every silver lining has a dark cloud, right? So there was an upside. Um, I lost six kilos. But that also got the other side. La. Because you know what the Bible says? As was, uh, the Bible says, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. But when, the weight, when it comes to weight loss, sometimes when the Lord taketh away, He giveth back. <laughs> so the net effect, okay lah. <laughs> not, not so bad, not so bad. So enough about me. Uh, think very bad are uh, common to all human experience. And let me ask the kids, kids, can you think in this time of Holy Week, okay, uh, the adults are invited to think also, Holy Week and Good Friday and Easter, can you think of someone in the Bible who went through a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day? Can we think of someone? No. Well, actually, it's a bit of a no-brainer because we know it's Jesus. So today we call Palm Sunday because of Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. So uh, that, the, what we read just now was from the book of Mark. I had to say that very carefully because once I heard a preacher say the book of Mark <laughs> instead. Now I'm going to read from John chapter 12, verses 12 and 13. Okay, my, my, why I'm reading is different translation, but don't worry. Uh, the next day. The next day, the great crowd that had come for the feast heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. They took palm branches and went out meeting him, shouting, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King of Israel. The problem is, not much later, John 19 records this. John chapter 19. So, um, verse 13, where's verse 13? When Pilate heard this, he brought Jesus out and sat down on the judge's seat, the place known as the stone pavement. It was the day of preparation of Passover week and the sixth hour. Here is your king, Pilate said to the Jews. But they shouted, take him away. Take him away. Crucify him. Shall I crucify your king? Pilate asked. We have no king but Caesar. The chief priests answered. Finally, Pilate handed him over to them to be crucified. And it's very possible that the ones who shouted for Jesus to be crucified were some of the same as those who earlier we had read were the ones who shouted, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And also we know what happens next, what we call Good Friday, Jesus' own terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day of his Suffering, his torture, and uh, his arrest. And that's why today is also called Passion Sunday. We remember Jesus' passion. Passion, the Latin root, means suffering. So remember the suffering of Jesus Christ. 
So Jesus, terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day, ends with this very painful day on the cross. But for us in church, it's sort of okay because we know the end result, you know. We know that uh, after Good Friday, there's Easter. And, but we need to realize that for Jesus, the terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day was very real. And so that brings us to the main point of today's sermon. Because of all this, because Jesus not, because of what Jesus went through, he's not only our crucified Savior, not only our risen Lord, the Bible says he is also our great high priest. So we now read from Hebrews chapter 4, verses 14 to 16. The writer of Hebrews puts it this way. Therefore, since we have a great high priest who's gone through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. For we do not have a high priest who's unable to, he says, empathize, my, also you can say sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet without sin. Let us then approach the throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Three important words from this passage in the original language of Greek. The first word, sympatheo. Translated sympathy or empathy. Literally, it means to share someone's experience. To share someone's experience. The other word is, uh, this one very, very long word. I must see on the... Peperasmenon. Peperasmenon means tempted or tested. Same word. Uh, in the Lord's Prayer, lead us not into temptation. Same word. So when we all sing the Lord's Prayer like later we will do, I tend nowadays not to sing because I find myself singing. Because for you, you attend one, sun, one service Sunday. I used to have to sing it four times in one Sunday and became sort of mechanical. So I developed a way when people are singing, I say it. My version of the Lord's Prayer uh, inside, silently. To make sure I don't just repeat it like a robot. And when it comes to lead us not into temptation, I say, let us not fall into the time of trial or testing. So Jesus was tested in every way. Then the final word is, Homoiotis, homoiotis, which means exact correspondence, not clone, exactly the same. It's translated in Hebrews, just as we are. In other words, Jesus, our high priest, was tested in every way, just like us. That's why our sermon is entitled, Just Like. I think you might have thought, maybe YouTube video, right? Would you please just like this video and subscribe? <laughs> no, that's not what I meant. It means that Jesus shares all our experiences, including our terrible, horrible, no good, very bad days. Because he went through his own just like us. So just like us, Jesus was in every respect tried and tested. Then the writer gives us this invitation. Let us approach the throne of grace 
and receive mercy and find grace to help in our time of need. That's the miraculous or the marvelous miracle of our terrible, no good, very bad days. We may think, like Alexander, no one hears, no one understands. But I want to assure you that Jesus does because he went through it in every way just like us. That's why we sing, Jesus knows our every weakness. So to conclude, um, I'd like to share something that Dr. Tan Layong wrote in the February-March issue of Impact Magazine. He's spoken here before, and uh, you know he was a medical missionary. Um, yeah, by the way, I saw him at the wake of my late Sec 2 Sunday school teacher at Wesley Church, Dr. Oswee Eng. I met him at the wake and I told him I'm going to use your story, your article in the sermon. So he knows this. And this is what he wrote in the article in Impact magazine. Um, I need to show you one more picture before I read this. This is what is called a cleft palate. Okay, some of the kids may not know it, but uh, we'll keep it just a while as I read the first part. Okay? Tan La Yong writes, Among all babies who are born, about one in 3,000 suffers from a congenital development disorder, disorder which results in a cleft lip or a cleft palate. The cleft deformity occurs when the roof of the mouth does not form properly when the fetus is about eight weeks old in the womb. Some years ago, I was involved with a team that provided free surgery for children with cleft lips or cleft palates. So you can see in the picture from the top, from the side, the original, after surgery, the sutures, the healing, and the completely healed cleft palate. Okay? So just bear this image, can, can switch it off as we go on with the article. So he says, my role was to visit the cleft baby before and after surgery. In one particular case, the cleft patient was already of school age, so rather than a baby, a young boy. It took some time to travel to the village. I sat on a small wooden stool in a wooden house to discuss the impending surgery with the mother and family members. I asked the mother, how is your boy? How is your son? My ears and my pen were primed to take note of medical conditions such as body weight, anemia, the occurrence of ear infections, and whether he had any other underlying deformities. The young mother sighed and said, my son, he has very few friends. Nayong says, I was thrown by her reply and almost reacted badly by reminding her that I was there on a fact-finding for surgery and I'm not a social worker. Thankfully, I bit my tongue. Just in time, as the mother continued, you see, he goes to school, but he has very few friends. Some kids laugh at him, make fun of him, so he doesn't really like to go to school. So we then went through the pre-op preparations, left the family with the vitamins and food supplements to build up the child physically and explain the long journey, 12 to 15 hours bus ride to the hospital in the city. So months later, after the surgery, I had the opportunity to speak to the mother. My aim was to find out about the side effects of the surgery, whether any infection and about weight gain. I had quite a few medical matters, matters to get through. Mother greeted me and I asked, how's your son after the surgery? She smiled and replied, he now has friends and he now likes to go to school. I was again about to react badly as I had all these medical parameters that I needed to know. Then I saw her motherly smile and knew that all was well. He confesses at the end. 
Sometimes I get entangled or tangled up with the details. I forget the picture, the big picture, as I'm overly focused on the minutiae that I deem urgent and important. The village mother taught me about illness and the importance of healing that goes beyond wound repair. She wanted her son to have friends. She wanted them all to stop laughing at others. Not to laugh at people, but to laugh together as people and as friends. I wanted to just get the job done. She wanted to build and establish relationships. The village mother taught me that, and listen carefully, she taught me that our Jesus is doing many and varied things for each of us. Primarily, primarily, he wants us to be his friends. The young boy had many terrible, horrible, no good, very bad days. Jesus knew exactly what he was going through. Jesus knew what he really needed. More than just cleft, palate, surgery, important though it was. Jesus indeed knows our every weakness. And Jesus provided the mercy and grace that boy needed for all his terrible, horrible, no good, very bad days. So today, Hebrews 4 still beckons to us. We've all had this thing very bad, terrible, horrible, no good, very bad days, right? He knows because just like us, he too was tested and tried. And so the Bible says, invites us, let's approach the throne of grace and receive mercy in our time of need. Mercy and grace for all our terrible, horrible, no good, very bad days. Let's pray. Dear God, our Father, we thank you that uh, you speak to us through many means, the mouth of children, the stories that we write for them through your word and in our hearts. We thank you that our Lord Jesus truly just like us, was thoroughly tried and tested. Grant us the willingness in all our terrible, horrible, no good, very bad days to indeed approach the throne of grace so that, so that we may find grace and mercy to help us in our time of need. Because Jesus knows our every weakness. In his name we pray. Amen.